The sage I'm talking about today has the botanical name Salvia officinalis. And that word officinalis indicates straight away that it is the type most often used medicinally. It's also known as common garden or kitchen sage. There are other sages which you might come across. These include the scarlet sage from Texas, Salvia cochinia, Spanish sage, Salvia lavandulifolia, and Chinese red sage, Salvia miltioriza, or something like that, which is actually green, not red, with lilac flowers. The word red refers to the juice extracted from the roots. Then there's white sage, Salvia apiana, extensively used in Native American medicine, and antelope sage, Eriogonum jamesii, not a true sage at all, but a type of wild buckwheat. All of these will have different properties to common sage, the herb I'm covering here. Sage is an easily recognised shrubby herb with leaf colours which vary from green to greenish grey. The flowers are mostly purple, perhaps bicoloured, but pink flowers are sometimes seen. There are also a couple of cultivars, Purpurascans, which has purplish red leaves, and Tricola, which is self-explanatory. You can use any of these for herbal medicine, but green sage is probably the most reliable. Sage is very easy to grow from seed and well worth the effort. Or you could just buy in a plant or two from your local nursery or beg some cuttings from a friend if you don't want to end up with dozens of sage plants to give away. The main thing to watch out for when planting is to put it in a sunny position and to make sure it has good drainage as it won't stand waterlogging. You can pick leaves any time of year as required for immediate use and the main crop of leaves just before flowering for drying or to distill them for oil. Left to its own devices, sage is a straggly bush, but gardeners usually trim it back to a pleasing shape in mid-autumn. The trimmings are ideal for drying for the kitchen, where it is a popular ingredient in stuffing and to go with fatty meats like pork, though there are many other uses. The easiest way to dry the leaves is to hang them up in bunches somewhere dry and airy, and then strip the leaves off. Or you can strip the leaves off first and lay them out on a tray. Remember that if you want to use sage medicinally, it's important that it is grown organically so that its properties are not masked and you don't end up ingesting toxic ingredients such as pesticides by accident. At this point, I need to warn you that sage is toxic in large amounts and that it is not suitable for use as a herbal medicine by anyone who is pregnant or suffering from epilepsy. Make a standard infusion with three to four teaspoons of fresh or one to two teaspoonfuls of dried sage to 250 ml, that's one American cup, eight fluid ounces of boiling water in a pot. Leave it to stand for 10 minutes or so and strain it into a cup, adding some lemon, honey, or both if you wish. You can drink this hot or cold. Limit intake to one cup a day. Sage is antibiotic, antifungal, astringent, antispasmodic, a good nerve tonic and is well known for its oestrogenic properties which make it useful for regulating periods, reducing milk production and it's also a treatment for menopausal symptoms like hot flushes. It's good for colds, indigestion, flatulence with wind or gas and also for anxiety and depression. But its most interesting use is the result of recent research which indicates that patients suffering from mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease who drink a cup of sage tea a day may experience improved brain function. Alzheimer's is such a debilitating disease that this is well worth trying on the principle of it can't hurt. Externally, the same infusion is useful as a wash for bites and stings and for skin infections. Used at half strength, it is good as a gargle for sore throat, as a mouthwash to treat ulcers and sore gums, and as a douche for BV. If you haven't got access to a sage bush, I sell sage leaves, tea bags and tincture in my shop at Franzalt Health.